Hello everyone. In this video that is not going to be long, I want to talk about tolerance zones for patterns, or you might call them composite tolerances. So you're going to see uh, basically uh, one uh, feature control frame and then another one underneath. Okay, so you might call it composite. So what is that? So if you have a pattern, most of the times in a physical object like uh, this part here, then uh, you know that the relative position of these, let's say, holes with respect to each other is quite a bit more important than their absolute position. Because let's say you want to put this part on a mating part that has four pins, and the pins have uh, very close to these uh, distances, 4.8 and 2.4, basic dimensions so now if you try to uh, make the position of this hole such that this 4.8 and 2.4 are uh, acquired as close as possible even if this 0.6 and 0.8 offset for the first hole which determines the absolute position of all of them are a little bit off it means that the holes are a little bit shifted like to the right or left or up and down they're moved but the pattern is preserved and you might still be able to put this part on the mating part although maybe with a little bit offset but still can clear the holes okay so that's one of the items I mentioned in the rules for uh, dimensioning and GDNT that in patterns, typically the relative positions are more important than their absolute positions. And that's what you can see here. Okay. Now, how do I convey this more importance, right? For relative uh, as uh, opposed to absolute. Here, I use this what we call composite uh, feature control frame, where there are two of them, composite tolerance zone. And the top one here, for which I use all three of my datums, A, B, and C, in this case, A is the bottom surface, B is the back surface, and C is the left surface. I use all three of them. This top one controls the absolute position of these four holes. And I'm giving it a little bit looser tolerance here. So that means if I show these four centers in their uh, ideal position, then there would be a diameter of 0.4, a circle with diameter of 0.4 around each one of these absolute positions. And as long as the center of that drilled hole is within these yellow circles, I'm good. But the problem is if... I go ahead and make, for example, the left hole right here. I drill it here, and then the, uh, the top left one, and then the top right one, I put it there. Then when I uh, try to put these two holes on the pins, this distance here between them is going to be uh, quite a bit more than 4.8, okay? And or maybe, for example, let me add the two other ones. So maybe then I add, for example, the bottom left one here, and maybe the bottom right one, uh, I put it down here. So if I connect these four together, right, and let me try to use a line here instead of drawing because my lines might not be perfectly straight. So if I go from here to here, right, see if I can get it a little bit better so something like that okay and then I add a few more lines so that's another one so here I added the other two lines and uh, if you look right now the problem is that rectangular pattern that I had, it's all gone. I mean, look at that here. It's now more of a um, trapezoid or something. And those dimensions, 4.8 and 2.4, will not be observed anymore, and I don't have a rectangular pattern anymore, so this is completely useless, right? While if I could 
make the positions that the center holes are drilled with respect to each other in a way that still I can not have this rectangular pattern, right? That would be a lot more useful. So how do I do that? In this case, what I will do, I say, hey, the position of each one of them could vary a little bit. But when it comes to relative position, I control the relative position using this uh, bottom uh, feature control frame. And I say what? I say this time you don't need to fix the part to datums A, B, and C. Just fix it to A, and A is the bottom surface. So literally put the part on the inspection table. You don't need any wall on the back or on the left of it. When that happens, then this part can easily move up and down, can easily move left and right, can easily rotate. Okay, because I don't have datums B and C in place. If that's the case, now with those motions possible, the only allowable error tolerance zone I give for the position of the holes relative to each other is only 0.1. Okay, what does that mean? It means now that I'm talking about the relative position, the drilled position, if you make the first one within this small blue circle of diameter 0.1, then once I draw this straight line of 4.8, and you get to the other point, right? You only have wiggle room for... Uh, half of this on each side, 0.05 on the left and the right. And similarly, again, when you draw this vertical line with 2.4, again, you have a little bit bigger room and a little bit bigger room. So what does that mean? It means that, well, I can have my pattern made like this, right? Rotated with respect to its original one, which is this one, it's rotated. The absolute positions of the uh, points are still within the yellow circle, so I'm good. But because when it came to relative position, I had a tighter tolerance, the size of the sides, this one and this one, are much better preserved. But I'm allowed to move this rectangle as long as these four blue corners four small blue circles stay within the yellow big circles, I'm allowed to move this rectangle or rotate it. So another way I can do this is, for instance, I can go ahead and uh, do something like this now. Okay, something like that still might work, huh? So you see, this has uh, the same size as the intended one, but as you see, it's all shifted, correct? So, uh, well, actually, I need to shift everything uh, to the right. So this one should come here. So you see here, all of the four corners with respect to their uh, ideal position, you see they all shifted like this. They're all shifted a little bit uh, to the uh, top and right. But still, that is okay. Or in this case, you see, not only they shifted, the whole rectangle is rotated. Still, that is okay as long as the pattern is preserved, right? So this you can do with what we call this composite uh, frame. And here we have two terminologies that I want you to know. So the top portion of the feature control frame, this part here, that uh, controls the absolute uh, position of the uh, holes, this part here, this is uh, what we call the um, pattern locating tolerance zone framework, or PLTZF, okay? That's this one, this top portion. It has a looser tolerance, and that determines these what these um, yellow circles, okay? So that determines these uh, yellow circles, 
And as you can see, it constrains the absolute position and orienta location and orientation of the holes relative to all of the datums. So relative to datums A, B, and C. Okay. But the bottom portion, the bottom portion of the feature control frame here is what we call the feature relating. So it's relative. The feature relating tolerance zone framework or FRTZF. And that one is basically this bottom portion of this composite FCF. Okay, so that is this part, and that controls what? It controls these uh, blue uh, circles, tighter tolerance. So it controls what? It controls relative, as I said, location and orientation of individual features within the pattern. And the good thing is this FRTZF, which is these blue circles and the pattern they create, they can translate and they can rotate within PLTZF, which are these four yellow circles. Why can it translate and rotate? Because it is not constrained with respect to data B and C, and it's only constrained with data what? A. So when you inspect that, only A is used. So you fix the part to the inspection table, the bottom surface of that, and nothing else while we are when we are um, basically looking at the absolute position of them we have to use all three datums okay so uh, this is the idea of a composite tolerance zone or a tolerance zone for a pattern where you can make this composite FCF and a loser tolerance for absolute, a tighter tolerance for relative position to preserve the pattern and still keep the part useful. And in SOLIDWORKS, if you want to do it, so here is what I did for that hole. And let me do it one more time for you here. So uh, if I uh, delete that feature control frame and let's add it one more time. So here I click here and then go to uh, this hole here, bring it down. And here I want a position. And let's say 0.5, as we said, it's a um, cylindrical region. And then let's say I need what? I need uh, datums A, B, and C. Huh? So let's go ahead and add these datums A, uh, B, and C, and done. And now you see here, you have this part here, which you can add a new frame. Again, this is position. This time, maybe it's point 0.1, as we said, still cylindrical zone, and still has a datum, but just A, okay?